welcome to day two of the World Athletics Under-20 Championships from Nairobi, Kenya, postponed for a year. This is the second biggest athletics event on the calendar. And of all the action yesterday set the standard of what to expect, then we're all in for a big treat over the next four days. Well, this year is the first time that an African country will be hosting these championships, which are taking place around 1,600 metres above sea level in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, which also played host to the World Under-18 Championships back in 2017. Nairobi is a city which prides itself on a vibrant athletics history, a population that loves track and field, and a city where wildlife really does take centre stage. This is because only 25 kilometers away from the Moy International Sports Center, where the athletes are competing, is this, the Nairobi National Park, featuring a backdrop of the city skyline. It's home to the famous Big Five and is one of the most successful sanctuaries for black rhinos in the world. I'm sure many of the athletes would love to head out to one of the many national parks and experience the beauty of this country firsthand. The Kasarari Stadium at the Moy International Sports Centre where all the action is happening at capacity can hold 60,000 fans and we saw that in full effect here at the World Under 18s in 2017. No fans this time but myself, Rachel Stringer and my co-commentator from a World 1500 metre silver medalist, Hannah England, are on hand to bring you all the action but here's how it unfolded yesterday. The first field event Women's pole vault, where South Africa coming out on top here with Mia Reinsdorf vaulting an area under 20 record of 4.15. France took silver with Ellie Roos and bronze went to Canada's Heather Abadi in 4.05. The women's 100 metre semi-final producing some cracking runs, but it was Jamaica's Tina Clayton who won her semi-final in the fastest time overall of 11.34. Can she defend Jamaica's title from 2018? Now onto the men's. Letzil Tobogo from Botswana stole the show with a super fast clocking of 10.10. Could Adam Jamili's championship record from 2012 be under threat later this evening? Now for some firsts in the World Under 20 Championships. The fans' new favourite event, the Mix 4x400 metre relay, making its debut in this edition, proved as entertaining as we all expected. Nigeria setting the pace in the heat with a championship record and going one better in the final with another championship record of 3.19.7 and the gold medal, their first under 20 gold since 2008. Yesterday's medal went to the relay quartet of Johnson and Mami, Iamabong Uko, Opinyemioki, Mbamadeli Ajayi followed by Poland becoming regulars on the mixed 4x400 metre podium at major events. They took the silver with 319.8. And it was India who came for a medal, go away with a bronze with a time of 320.6. I'm sure this event will prove to be a regular at under 20 events going forward. The final event on track on day one ended with another first, this time in the men's 3,000 metre final. The fastest in the field, Ethiopia's Tedesi Work, who played games to the rest of the field for a few laps before putting his stamp on the race and putting the accelerator down and running away from the rest. Only his teammate, Abdul Mani, could go with him, but even he couldn't live with Worku's last 100 metre surge. It ended Ethiopia 1 2 for Worku and Ali Abdul Mani with Eritrea taking the final podium spot with Habdum Samuel in bronze. Well, Hannah, let's talk about all the action on day two then. Some exciting events coming up, but let's draw our attention now to the women's heptathlon. We start on day two with these ladies. We're going to start with a long jump. It was very exciting yesterday, wasn't it, Hannah? 
It was a really good day yesterday, and you can see the ladies getting ready in the core room for the long jump this morning. Sophie Kreiner there of Austria, uh, vying for an Austrian medal. They've got Sarah Lager, got a first in 2016, second in 2018. I think Sophie Kreiner will be looking to emulate her compatriots' performances there. And Valerie Rookerbrod coming back from two PBs yesterday. We had some great PBs in this field already today. So uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking for a few more in their final three events. And we saw there as well, 15 degrees and cloudy, similar conditions to what we saw yesterday as well. So yeah, grey skies at the moment over the stadium, but let's bring you up to speed on exactly what's going to be unfolding for you guys today on day two. So everything's kicking off at nine o'clock with the heats of the women's 400 meter hurdles and then We'll be wrapping up the heptathlon events. We have three more to bring you today, starting with that women's long jump, which we were just chatting about briefly there. Then we'll have the heats of the men's and the women's 800 meters. And then later on this evening for our afternoon session, we'll have some great action for you. We have five finals to bring you, including the men's and the women's 100 meter finals which if the semi-finals were anything to go by, Hannah, we are going to have some absolute crackers there. Tobogo and Clayton in their 100 meter finals respectively, I'm sure are going to produce something special, possibly championship records in both. I've been really excited to see Tobogo challenge that 10.05 of Adam Jamili that stood since 2012 um, and it looks like he could be up for beating that tonight. Absolutely. Well, your timetable is absolutely stacked. We really hope you're as excited for all the action on day two as we are. We're going to get underway because these are the athletes coming in for our first event on track on day two. We have the women's 400 meter hurdles. They're just getting their numbers checked in the call room, which is what you're seeing at the moment. This is a process that all athletes have to go through. Hannah, when you went in the call room, did you have a particular routine superstition anything that you used to bring to this call room or do yes it's particularly at this age i'd have too many quirks too many things i'd try and control i'd have my routine and my shoes and, and everything that i'd go through before competing uh, but as i as i moved through the age group ranks i realized i probably had to leave that behind and, and deal with the uncertainty of the reality of life um, but yet yeah, it's, it's a high high pressure high stress situation well that's savannah sutherland we just saw there and she's unbeaten this year in all the competitions that she's competed in. She's going in heat three, so it'll be really interesting to see how she gets on. But we have an absolute stack three heats to bring you. Looks like they're watching some Olympic triathlon there. I believe that was one of the Brownleys. <laughs> Maybe that's just settling their nerves. But this is heat one we're about to bring you now. I'm very excited for this one. Well, this then is the first heat of the women's 400 meter hurdles. This is going to be great. Marta Rasmussen there, the European under 20 bronze medalist from Denmark. 58.10 is her personal best. Eight athletes contesting this first heat, which is great to see. Ludovin Ober from France, actually born in Haiti, has a personal best of 58.23. Was a Euro junior finalist herself in lane four then. Heidi Salomon from Finland, 59.10. You just saw her on your screen there. Ben Dover, lane three. Lane two, Agnes Gumbi from Kenya, one minute 297. She brings to these championships. Angelika. Gergo, European under 20, fifth place Italian there. The Italian under 20, 400 meter hurdle champion. A lots of quality in this first heat. 
Fastest, though, in lane eight. Rasmussen from Denmark. Bronze medal in the under-20 championships recently. Let's see how she gets on in lane eight. Set. A fast start then for these athletes in this first heat of the 400 meter hurdles. Watch lane eight. It is Rasmussen who gets over the first hurdle cleanly and first. She is going really strong out in lane eight, the hardest lane when you're competing in an event like this because you really don't know where the other girls are until you get into the home straight. Opa there off France going really strongly at the top of your picture. Let's see who gets over the hurdles first. It's Rasmussen there of Denmark striding away from the rest of the field, getting really cleanly over those hurdles as well. Looking really strong, probably a hurdle, a metre length ahead of the rest of the field. But as they come into the home straight, it is Ober who is really gaining on her. So is Heidi Salomon of Finland. I think it looks like Heidi Salomon of Finland could have a great final 10 metres, but no, it is lane eight. Martha Rasman there from Denmark who gets the victory in that one. 57, 9, 8. A PB for her as well. Big PB. By 0.2 of a second then. Salomon, 58, 1, 6. And Opa of France, 58, 4, 7. First two in each heat qualify the next two fastest will advance to the final. So Aubert then has to wait and see if 58.47 is quick enough. Two more really strong heats to come. Seven. So we'll have to wait and see. Hannah, what did you make of this first heat? I think you said with Martha Russman having to be out on the outside in lane eight, running blind almost, uh, was a tough run for the for the Den young lady from Denmark, but she managed it, she ran a personal best, and to pace yourself on these hurdles correctly, um, that's going to do a lot for her nerves and hopefully her excitement as we look forward to the final on Sunday. But for her to break that magical 58 barrier, you know, to get that 57 next to her, next to her name, uh, will be a great start to her campaign. Yeah, she just looks to tire a little bit, but then kind of finds an extra something in the last 10 meters. She wanted to win that first heat and prove, you know, that she came here with a medal in the under 20 championships recently. And that would have given her a, some really great confidence coming into this event as well. Well, and hopefully that will give her a better lane draw for the final as well. If you can win your heat, you will get a better lane draw. Um, so hopefully she'll be, to be enjoy that on Sunday. I talk about how difficult it is to come from lane eight to win a heat. How difficult is it really, Hannah? I think in an event like this, as you see those results there, confirmation of that personal best for Martha Russman, 57.93, so that's being rounded down, that will be nice for her. And Heidi Salmonen, also a PB with 58.12. I think running in lane eight in the hurdles is potentially the easiest. You have the barriers to pace yourself anyway, you have your stride pattern, but a great PB for the Kenyan athlete there in sixth position as well. Yeah, some great results there in the first heat, the women's 400 meter hurdles. Ngombi then from Kenya, 102.65, a personal best, but it really was about the Danish athlete and the Finnish athlete who took top spot in this first heat. Auberge then will have a pretty long wait. Two more heats to watch and wait. Hannah, would you do that as well? Would you wait if you were in the first heat, for example, and you were in one of those spots where you might make the final, would you watch the rest of the heats unfold or would you go into the cool room and get on with your cool down? I think you'd absolutely sit there and watch. It's, it's so tough because fundamentally, if you don't make that next round, then you, you, you might not be as keen to go and warm up and, and warm down and recover for the next event. Uh, so I think you'd absolutely sit on the steps and, and, and wait and see whether your time was good enough for the next round. Well, we now have shots of the women's heptathlon because we're looking to start their long jump this morning. These girls will have had a bit of a chance to recover last night because they had four events yesterday, three more today. Last night, of course, 
end of the 200 meters, which was a great event for these ladies. That is one of your Finnish athletes there, Kaiko. She had a bit of a tough start yesterday when she got, she clattered one of the hurdles in the 100 meter heats, 100 meter hurdle heats earlier. So not the best start, but her teammate, Saga Valenin, as you can see there, is leading the charge. 3,638 points to her name. She stretched that lead over the Austrian, Sophie Kreiner there in second by 202 points. It's a pretty nice gap then heading into this second day of competition for these females. And then Enoch there sitting in third as well. It's been those three athletes who have been there or thereabouts throughout the, the first day of competition. The two Finnish athletes then just sitting down in the shade. Maybe the cloud has gone away now and the sun has come out here. Maybe they're talking tactics in this long jump event. Where are we going to put our mark? How are we going to approach the run up? We'll leave you to think of what they're talking about, guys. So it is time for heat two of the women's 400 meter hurdles. We'll start in lane eight with Alicia Kazmarek. We already saw her last night taking a silver in the mixed relay championships um, here in her individual event. And she has come sixth at the European juniors and she's Polish champion. So keep your eye out for her. Netza Dolnek inside of her. Alana Hansen, she was seventh at the European junior championships competing for Belgium today. Personal best of 58.51. She said she's having the time of my life with this awesome team. Nice to hear that positive review from the young athlete. Andrea Svankova inside of her, Anna Konstantina Ciazza-Pogani from Greece, Garielle White, this is one of the fastest women in this field today, 57-28, Jamaican under-20 champion, She's undefeated in 2021. Will she continue that string here at these championships? And completing the lineup in lane two is Jada van Staden from South Africa. Another athlete under that one minute mark with 59.05. First two automatically qualify for Sunday's final, joined by two non automatic qualifiers. So, this is heat two of the women's 400 meter hurdles. Set. Keep your eye on lane three, Garel White, 57-28 this season. Already up on the outs athlete outside of her. Chetza Pugani of Greece. Garel White looks to have a strong lead at the moment. We can watch these hurdles. The athletes that raise rise first are in the lead and that is Garel White at the moment from Van Staden I think on the inside the Republic of South, uh, South African athlete as they come through that 200 meter mark it's like Jamaica from Belgium and Poland the Belgium athlete having a fantastic run that there in lane seven that's six that is Alana Hansen's but it is Garel White who's going to run away with this victory Garel White with one barrier left to navigate. She will take the first automatic qualifying spot into Sunday's final, but who is going to get the second? Yana Van Staden of South Africa. The fast finishing pole on the outside, but I think Yana Van Staden might have held on for second place ahead of Kazmarek there for third. So 59.33 for Kazmarek. One hundredth of a second behind behind Van Stad, and that shows how important it is to run all the way through the line. But Garel White commanding victory there. Fastest time so far. That was faster than our winner of the first heat, the Jamaican looking in the pole position. Well it was all about White, wasn't it? But Van Standen there had an awesome run to just hold on to that automatic qualifying spot. But Kazmarak, like you said, Hannah, what a finish. She'll be praying that she gets through, hoping, wishing, because it was just by literally a whisker length, wasn't it? But look at how White gets out of her blocks really fastly there. She just accelerates 
from the off and gets over that first hurdle so fast before any of the other athletes and then just extends that lead and looks so comfortable in doing so. This is why she is unbeaten in all her six outings over the hurdles this year. But she'll have to contest if the next heat goes to plan. Savannah Sutherland, she's also been unbeaten. The Canadian athlete's going to go next, but Garel White then doesn't look to slow down at all. Even though she could, she looks relaxed all the way through that finish line, just easing up the last one or two metres or so, knowing that she had that race wrapped up and, and was in control throughout. And we spoke a little bit about the lane draw there, but for Yarda van Staden, having Garel White um, on the lane outside of her, that might have helped her, pulled her to that fast time. She looked good down the back straight, and I thought she wasn't in that top two, top three, uh, around the final bend, but she was. She came good in that home straight. And we can see the results there of that heat two. Confirmed win for Garel White, 58-65. And second place has been, that was uh, different than the graphic showed on our screen. So Kasmarek did get that victory, powering over the line in 59.32. Jana van Staden, 59.33, will have to wait for that non-automatic qualifying spot. Well, we did just hear there's been a disqualification in heat one. Martha Rasmussen there from Denmark. She obviously won heats number one from the outside from lane eight of course she's a european under 20 bronze medalist she trailed her leg there disqualified as you can see i mean that must be so disappointing we're going to see that again just so we can bring hannah in and hannah can get her thoughts on this one as well because it's always hard to see when you first get some pictures of it just to understand exactly what she did do wrong there isn't great to see in these junior events. So we hope we can have a, a quick look again and, and try and just explain to you why this athlete has been disqualified. So what we saw yesterday was a lot of lane infringements. We saw people standing on the line. But what you can see here from the athlete from Denmark is, is her first hurdle. You can see her left leg there, the trail leg. So her first leg is over fine, but her trail leg there, you can see goes around the side of the hurdle. Um, and that just unfortunately isn't allowed. You have to clear all the hurdles. It can be something that can happen on the bend and uh, driving out those blocks, you're going so fast. It won't be intentional, um, but unfortunately it has resulted in disqualification for, for an athlete that looks so strong in that first heat. And is that also something because you're in the outside lane and you don't, you're not really close to any of the other athletes, so you're not really thinking about them possibly until the, the home straight? Yeah, no, it could definitely be that. And it's just, it's just one of those unfortunate things. It does happen. Um, and I'm sure it is such a shame because she's looking so strong. That's something she'll go away and learn, learn from. Obviously subject to appeal as well. They do have a chance to appeal all the decisions here, but um, it looks at this stage like that DQ next to her name will stand. We'll have to bring you up to speed on that though, but still one more heat to go in these women's 400 meter hurdles. So excited to see what the third heat brings you. Okay, this is the third and final heat then of the women's 400 meters hurdles. Okay, we're starting in lane eight then. Sophie, uh, Sofia Lafrachina from Portugal, 58.96, her best. That's the lady we've been talking about. Savannah Sutherland, unbeaten this year. The Canadian, she brings a PB of 57.87 to the party today. Mashia Bridgeton, Jamaica, under 20 silver medalist. In lane six, 58.62 is her personal best. We have the Croatian then. Leskak there, 59.76. In lane four, Charlize Illard from South Africa. We saw a South African in the previous heat as well. And then in lane two, we have Maria Tarabanskaya. 58-3-3, an authorised neutral athlete then going in lane two. But do keep your eyes peeled, as you did in the previous heat for the unbeaten athlete, Savannah Sutherland from Canada. She starts in lane seven. So again, a 
one of these outside lanes. We'll see who clears the first hurdle first. Indication of who's in the lead here. Well, it is lane seven then, top of your picture, that we are looking out for. Savannah Sutherland, she does clear that hurdle first, but it is a Jamaican hot on her heels as well. Bridgeton there. So seven and six. Savannah Sutherland from Canada looking really strong at the moment, unbeaten this year. She's going to LSU in the fall, this athlete. So she'll be studying university. They're all young, of course, just finished high school, many of these athletes. Really driving then to get over the hurdles to put her mark on this race. Still has the lead as we come into the final stretch then from the Jamaican athlete inside of her. She'll know that she's there. She'll be feeling that now. This is where the lactic acid really starts to build. You can see her form just going away from her slightly. She needs to really stay in control now for the last 50 meters. Clear that final hurdle and really drive for the line. As we've seen the Jamaican athlete do, the Jamaican athlete can't quite get there. Sutherland takes this third and final heat. 58-47 from Bridgeton of Jamaica, 58-90. And Tara Banks, Kaya there, 59-17. They're your top three. Top two, of course, only go through to the final. We'll have to wait and see if the third place athlete then, Tarabanskaya, is fast enough. 59-1-7. I think the previous heats may have been quicker, but we'll have to wait for confirmation. But Savannah Sutherland then continuing her unbeaten record in these heats, Hannah. She looked really strong doing it. I think it's important to move through the heats with intention and, and if you're on a winning streak you'd want to continue that and take that momentum into the final into the final and perhaps the end of your season you can see Sutherland here looking really strong she chops her stride a little bit there uh, sometimes that's a mark of you, you, your legs are fresh you've got speed the hurdles coming too quickly uh, so she might go away and adjust her stride pattern or this might be something she's been doing all season and she just won't rock the boat and she'll uh, she'll won't change anything she moves through to the biggest race of the season looking really strong into that last barrier uh, like you said, all that lactic, all that fatigue didn't seem to affect Savannah Sutherland. She maintains her unbeaten streak. And Mashisha Bridgeton of Jamaica comes through for that second automatic spot. Uh, smooth running from this group. I think Sutherland as well. She doesn't really lose her form. She keeps upright. I think Bridgeton there, you saw, you know, she was really struggling in the final 40, 30 meters or so. She's like leaning forward. She was really trying to get to the line as quickly as possible. She wanted the line to come to her, whereas Sutherland kept her form. She maybe led back slightly, which is also a sign of fatigue, but she looked the strongest athlete in that heat for sure. Well, confirmation now of those heats of the women's 400 meter hurdles. The Canadian, Savannah Sutherland there, 58-45 for first place. And Bridgeton, 58-88. She takes that second automatic qualifying spot to make it through to those finals. Great race then in heat number three. But now it is time for the to have our first look at the heptathlon field as they get their competition underway. It's the long jump. Saga Vanonen, our event leader at the moment, looking for Finland's first gold medal. They've had up minor medals at the World Juniors, but Saga Vanonen, the European Junior Champion, could be Finland's first ever World Junior Champion. She, I thought her day was good yesterday. She looked really disappointed with her shot put. I'm sure she is keen for um, another 6,000 meter plus point uh, score. She achieved that at the European Junior Championships when she took that victory. This is her first long jump of the competition. Nice on the board. They'll get three attempts in this competition. Personal best is 6.34 for Saga Vinanen. She opens her campaign with 5.95. Well, I hope she's going to be a bit more pleased with her performances because we saw her getting quite upset after the shot put yesterday. Hannah, I hope she's gone home tonight and spoken to her coaches and maybe FaceTimed her parents or her friends and said, you know what, you're still leading by 200 plus points. You know, you're in the driving seat. Don't be so hard on yourself because I think these young athletes, they do. They don't really see the bigger picture sometimes. You know, if you win this event, it's a great platform to propel you further in your career. Um, you know, Nafi TM, I don't think she even won this event. She came 14th was her best result. 
at a world under 20 and, and look what she's gone to do one of the greatest heptathletes to ever walk the planet so you know if she wins here that's a great statement of course when you look at some of the past winners, you've got to look at Carolina Kluft, record holder. She's won it twice. She's the, the world record holder, European junior record holder. Uh, all the accolades there for Carolina Kluft, and she started her, camp, her career at this stage, um, as, did, as did many of our tremendous athletes. But this heptathlon field, they have to be inspired by the people that have gone before them. 6.04 there for Suj. Which just trying to look at my stats. I think that could be a PB. I think that could be her first time over six metres. She had a, a nice five centimetres to her personal best there, which will get her 16 points. 10 centimetres gets you around 30 points here. So that's how these ladies could rack, rack up the points through this event. But next on the runway is Kaiko. As we said, unfortunate, I know we, we keep saying it, unfortunate first event is so uh, frustrating for these, uh, for these athletes when potentially don't see their full potential because uh, we Kaiko didn't get the points she she deserved or her an athlete of her caliber deserves in that first round because she clattered a hurdle but she's stuck in there and she's out there doing the long jump right now personal best of six 31 second second furthest in the field 631 for Nia Keiko what can she do today close on the board there for, for the Finnish athlete. So, yeah, we're watching, of course, the board and if the athletes make a mark on that board, there's not what we want to mark on the board. We don't want it, obviously, over. Oh, it looks like that's going to have a red flag. We'll have to wait and see what flag is waved. Looks like she might have to adjust her mark a little bit. That's always tricky, though, isn't it? Getting your mark in the correct place. A foul then on Geico's first jump. But yeah, Hannah, how difficult that is that to figure out where they put their little bits of uh, sellotape, I guess, is what they pretty much use these days. No, it is, it is really, really hard. Um, athletics can look easy when someone does it correctly, but it's technically really, really hard. And um, those athletes really have to figure out their run up, but that will be affected by fatigue. It'll be affected by adrenaline and how fast you run. But 400 meter hurdles, we're looking at the men now as they get ready to head out for their heats. That is exactly the same. You've got your stride pattern. You've got your plan that you've practiced over and over again, but you throw in adrenaline because you're at the World Junior Championships and you've got your national vest on, um, or you throw in fatigue because you're moving through the rounds and all of those finely tuned plans um, can really be jeopardized and you have to think on your feet and luckily those athletes in the long jump they will have a chance to change their run up and adjust that to try and get a valid jump back in the cool room now then these are the athletes getting ready for the heats of the men's 400 meter hurdles coming your way next on track This is heat one of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Hardeep Kumar on the outside in lane seven. Saw his teammates take that fantastic bronze medal in the mix four by four. To his inside is Matej Gucek from Slovenia, just 17 years old, the Balkan under 20 champion. 50.99 his time from this year. On his inside is Ekil Nathaniel from Nigeria. Alosius Kipnaget of Kenya in his home country done the uh, Kenyan trials on this track. Be very familiar with this arena. To his inside is Roshan Clark, also 17 years old from Jamaica. He's Jamaican under 20, under 18 champion and the NACAC under 18 champion. And completing the lineup in lane two is Ismail Abukar of, Q of Qatar. It's a personal best of 51.88. So just six starters in this first heat of the men's 400 meter hurdles they are looking for a place in the final that will be the first four automatic first four athletes in this race will automatically progress to the final
Stand up, please. Stand up, please. This will be the starter asking the athletes just to stand up. Might be a technical fault. But it gives me a moment to correct myself and say there is a semi final in this event. So I was thinking, first four from five heats, that's way too many for a final. So there's a semi final to be contended on Saturday afternoon before the final on Sunday. See the athletes setting up their blocks. Anyone new to athletics, blocks are really set up to suit your, your build, your height, exactly what feels comfortable for you. So the athletes will go out there and measure that out, much like they do on the long jump runway. They will measure that out until it feels exactly right. Have you ever tried blocks, Hannah, yourself? Obviously a middle distance runner, but surely you've had a bit of a laugh and put yourself in some blocks for the fun? Well, I run a children's athletics club uh, where I've learned how to do the block start alongside some 12 year olds because I thought I don't know how to do this it's ludicrous I've been to Olympic Games um, I don't know how to use one of the main pieces of equipment in my sport uh, so I had the very first attempt a couple of weeks ago it wasn't pretty <laughs> so <laughs> Hannah's now an expert then on block start so absolutely Hannah take this oh away gosh. well if, if my athletes are better than me it just makes me a great coach <laughs> but I'm sure these guys will be keen to settle into these blocks after that delayed start. So Abakar in one, Clark in two, Kipnagetic in three, apologies, four with empty lane one, Nathaniel in five, Guchek in six, and Kumar six. in seven. <laughs> and they're away this time. Keep your eye on Roshan Clark, the Jamaica. You can see the yellow vest there. It's already gained ground on Kipnagetic. So Roshan Clark, no, it is Nathaniel of Nigeria rising fast, rising first. They move down the back straight. It looks like Ezekiel Nathaniel from Nigeria has got a large lead over the field. Can he hold this in the last 150? He's gone out so fast. He's got it at the moment, but will he be able to handle the fatigue and the lactic over these final two barriers? Almost goes there. Ezekiel Nathaniel. Clattered that he's got one more hurdle to go. Let's hope he makes it. Roshan Clark, though, he has judged this right, negotiating that last hurdle very smoothly. See, it eases down over the line and a strong second place there for the other 17 year old in the, in the field, Martin Ian Gucek of Slovenia. Well, disappointment then, wasn't it, for Nathaniel from Nigeria? We'll have to wait and see where he finished in the end, but. When you do clatter one of those hurdles, it can cause all kinds of problems, and it seemed to there for the Nigerian athletes. But no problems for the Jamaican. Roshan Clark there showing his absolute potential. Easing up as well nicely. Well, we can see Nigerian athlete then. Nathaniel gets out really nicely, looks really strong on the back straight, working hard round that top bend as well looking the class act ahead there of Clark but it was Clark then victorious and Nathaniel you can see how much he faded fifth in the end for the Nigerian I believe let's see exactly what happens the Indian athlete then back of your screen also having a problem Kippen Kipnagetic there of Kenya finishing strongly, but what a shame for Hardik Kumar. Gave it absolutely everything, and these hurdles are a tricky thing to negotiate. But he did get up and finish the race. We saw him from the, finish the race, but of course disappointed. Great to see him get up and finish regardless. But Roshan Clark, really cool, calm uh, performance there for me. He could have, he would have seen Ezekiel Nathaniel go flying off on the outside, uh, getting that massive lead. But he paced himself here really well. If we look at this hurdle here, that is where it fell apart a little bit for the Nigerian athlete. He did go outside of his lane, but he didn't impede anyone, and he went to the outside. So let's hope that won't, wouldn't be a disqualification for the Nigerian athlete. But Roshan Clark getting this men's 400-meter hurdles underway with a good victory. 
That will be a fourth place there for um, Kip Nagetic of Kenya. That will be an automatic spot into the semi-final. Oh, Hannah, he did just run on the line. I think he placed possibly one or two feet on the line. And, you know, it's tough. As much as it hurts the clatter hurdle, it's then trying to figure it out mentally as well. But no problems for Clark there. He looks around. Anyone coming? No, I'm going to ease up over the line then in lane three there and just make it a little bit easier heading into the semi-finals for myself. So there are the results of that first heat, confirming that victory for Roshan Clark. And it was a personal best. 50-93 for the 17-year-old from Jamaica. Matic Ian Gucek from Slovenia, the other 17-year-old coming second. Abakar of Qatar, personal best for him. Kip Nagetech for the personal best. And even Ezekiel, Ezekiel Nathaniel getting a personal best as well, holding his composure to finish off that race, uh, despite hitting that hurdle as he came into the final 100 meters. Well, drama then in this first heat. Drama at the start and drama at the end as well, but not as many dramas in the women's 400 meter hurdles. Salomon then from Finland qualified fastest, 58 1 2. Sutherland there, 58 4 5. Ober from France, 58 4 6. Garel White, remember that name, the Jamaican, 58 6 5. She looked like the class act as well, as as many of these athletes, of course, but. Jamaican Bridgeton 58.88, she qualifies as well. The Italian Gergo there, 58.84. She grabs one of those fastest spots for the final. Maria Tarabanskaya, 59.18. And Kaz Marquette as well, qualifying into that final. Straight final then for the women coming up. Heat to a final in the men's. It's Heat semi final and final really going through the rounds here this world under 20 championships. Well, and if I was one of these athletes watching in the stands, I would remember Kazmarek driving through that finish line, running all the way to the line and qualifying by 100th. That is so important in our sport. Well, this then is the second heat to the men's 400 meter hurdles in lane eight then from Spain, Ibanez Guevara. 54.96, his personal best, really fast. The Croatian there, sick. Seventh in the year under 20 championships. That's lane six. Para from Venezuela, 52.84. South African there, Venta. Lane four then. Peter Kit home from Kenya. He'll be hoping he can do the business on his home track. 51-5-3, the Kenyan trials, of course, took place here at the Moyo International Sports Center. Authorized neutral athlete then, Dennis Novoseltsev. 50-54 to his name. And then in lane two as well, we do have an athlete from the Czech Republic, Michael Krakai from club TJ Spartak. Well, he looks pretty happy to be here, doesn't he? Making the most of his opportunity here. Says a para from Venezuela in six. Oh, I love it when the guys really enjoy the moment. Okay, then. Your fastest athletes are in lane three and lane seven. Let's focus then on the Kenyan athlete. On home soil, of course, for him. Didn't have to travel very far, I'm sure. Peter Kitholm then in lane four for Kenya. On his inside though, Dennis Novo Seltzer. It's been a really fast time at 50 54. Everyone safely out of the blocks then for the second heat of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Really can't see the difference there, but it is the athlete he was enjoying themselves, the Venezuelan athlete, Cesar Para. Going strongly. Kit home then from Kenya. Really nice technique over those hurdles. Sick though from Croatia in lane seven. Getting over those hurdles really strongly as well. Let's see who is first coming into this home track. Kit home from Kenya. He is loving competing on this track, which he would have competed at for the trials, but watch the athlete to his inside. Dennis never sells then. He is powering down that home straight. So it is 
authorized neutral athlete then in one. The Kenyan into the South African, I think, just grabbed the third spot. Vetna there, but Nova Seltsev, he absolutely found another gear as he came over that last hurdle there. 59-0, Kit home 51-3-2, Vetna 52-9-3. They are top three there. Four, of course, go through to the semi-finals. That was a strong run off Peter Kit home then, maybe inspired by the personal vest of Kip Nagetic in that first round. But Kit home were commanding in the race. It's impressive for Novoselsev. He ran his own race. He's clearly a very experienced athlete because he came through so well in that last 50 meters. Just doing and you know running this to get into that final, but also to practice, like I was saying, practice your stride pattern. These athletes would have been waiting to compete today. They would have been eager to get onto the track, but it was a commanding victory for Novoseltsev. So we see him come through in this last 50, but Kit Home holding on for that second place really well. But it was tight across those li that line for the last two automatic qualifying spots for the rest of the field. It literally looks like he could turn it on as he got over that last hurdle. He just found something extra. So here, confirmation of the results. And Dennis Novoseltsev then 50-88. The Kenyan with a PB there. Peter Kithom 51-3-1 for second. Third, South African Christian Vetna 52-9-1. And Zefan Jancic 53-2-1 for the fourth and final automatic qualifying spot in that second heat. Here we are back at the heptathlon. This is Enuk of Estonia. She'll be looking for Estonia's first ever medal at the World Junior Heptathlon. She's in third place at the moment. She's got a personal best of 6.05. And I've been doing some math. She is 90 points behind Sophie Kreiner. Sophie Kreiner of Austria is in second place at the moment. 90 points is about 30 centimeters. And Enuk's PB is 44 centimeters further. So Enoch could really claw back some points um, on that silver medal position if she gets this competition right. Hannah, she's an athlete who um, is out in the University of Oklahoma. I know that you're a, an athlete that went to America yourself. How much did that help you in your career? And what was the experience like being out in America at the university over there? Well, the NCA system in America, the competition system they've got set up is so strong. Um, and I think it's a really good opportunity for athletes to develop to see Vannon in on the runway now. It's her second round jump. We've got a tremendous system in Europe with the club athletics that does really nurture and bring on our athletes. But I feel the NCA system, the high level of competition there, um, really progresses our athletes. And, and it's not surprising when you, you hear of, uh, representatives here like Inuk uh, going to exploit that NCA system to improve themselves. We saw it with Mondo Duplantis. We see it with so many of the sprinters nurtured and developed in that environment. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a great part of our sport and a great way to develop. You did pretty well as well, didn't you, Hannah? <laughs> and an NCA indoor and outdoor title at Florida State University, so I enjoyed that. And in the one year that she was there, she did that all. Anyway, Bannon in 5.98, not to just quickly move past that, Hannah, I think that was awesome. But Bannon in then 5.98 in that second round attempt, doing the business end and the women's long jump as well. Let's see if she can improve on that and get that six meter mark, which all these athletes want to get, of course. But I think there could be a change in that silver and bronze during this women's long jump between Enuk and Werner. So we need to keep our eye on Kreiner. We need to keep our eye on that. But we have more of the men's 400 meter hurdles to get underway before that. Let's see last of these 400 meter hurdle athletes in the quorum, getting their numbers checked, getting their spikes checked. So this is heat three of the men's 400 meter hurdles on the outside, Holubovic of Ukraine, personal best 52.98. In lane seven is Isenko of Latvia. Lane six, Sorjank of Croatia. He has got a personal best of 51.25 and he looks fired up and excited to be here. Lane five, we've lost Trinidad and Tobago athlete from lane five, but lane four is Berke Akam 
from Turkey, looking for Turkey's first ever medal in the men's 400 meters, uh, 400 meters at the World Juniors in the hurdles. He is the European junior champion. Can he add that world title to his resume? Ali Almed of Iraq is in lane three and lane two is Jorge Garcia of Spain. He was fifth at those European junior championships. He's got a 100 meter personal best of 10.58. So watch out for a fast start there from lane one. It's heat three of the 400 meter hurdles, men. First four get a spot in the semi final on Saturday. Set. Heat three, the men's 400 meter hurdles underway. Keep your eye out for Berke Assam in lane four from Turkey. He's already up on the athletes outside of him. There's an empty lane and he's nearly up on the Croatian. See him rising above, above the other athletes. That shows he is in the lead as they move through the halfway mark. Berke Assam. It's a regular in the Turkish 4x4 team, took fourth place in the World Relays. And you can see he's got 0.3 of a second on the rest of the field, but keep your eye on the Spaniard on the inside. Our Sam in, in the lead, looking smooth. Two hurdles to go for these men. Jorge Garcia looking relaxed on the inside as well. This looks like smooth, easy running for these athletes, but they must get across that line in the top four to qualify for Saturday's semi-final. Easy for Assam. Lasenko joins him, Garcia and Sorjan complete the top four in this race. The rest will have to wait to see if they can advance as a non automatic qualifier. But Assam, for me, the favourite in this event, and that race showed why. So didn't put a foot wrong, a regular stride pattern, didn't look troubled, and just stuck, got his job done. Well, coming in then as a European under 20 champion. You are going to be full of confidence, aren't you, heading into this one? Look at him going over the hurdles there, flying, making it look so easy, making it look like hurdles aren't even on the track there for Akam. Doesn't phase him at all. The Croatian as well looking really comfortable but it is Akam then who takes this heat in his stride takes his victory in his stride as well fast finishing Asenko and then Garcia from Spain he was also in that European under 20 final he looks like he eased up maybe slightly fatigued then Akam though doesn't even look like he's he's ran a race there very comfortable victory for the athlete from Turkey. See confirmation of that result there. 52.40 for Berke Assam. Dimitris Lasenko, 52.57. Jorge Garcia, 52.73. And Dominic Skorjank, 52.97. And a PB there for fifth place in 53.05. First of all, automatically through to that semi final. Right then, back to the women's long jump pentathlon. Sliv Evershute here is coming up for you. Second round attempt for the Lithuanian. Her PB, 598. Her best result so far, 569. Looking if she can get on that board nicely. It looks pretty good. Have to wait and see if she gets that white flag. The athletes always look for the white flag signal there. And they know it's a great, yeah, really nicely in the middle of that board. She could get a few centimeters if she really wanted to do, but that's a nice safe position that she currently has. Measured, of course, from 
the back of her. So wherever pretty much her bum probably lands is where they measure from. No hands want to be behind her, of course. So second round attempt, 5.92. She betters that then, getting close to her personal best. Of 5.98, so 5.92 at the moment. Six centimeters, and then she'll have a PB next to her name. Right, we're saying on this long jump event. So we have got Kreiner here. She is under pressure. She's in the silver medal position at the moment, but that scorecard would see Enuk overtake her into that silver medal position and her be demoted into third at the end of this long jump heptathlon if she can't claw back a few more centimeters. She solid jump on the first round to get a mark in and it looked like she attacked that more. I say desperate to jump as far as she can. And that's a great mark on the board there. You don't want to give away centimeters before you're behind the plasticine. And that I would say is almost perfect. See the distance for Sophie Kreiner. Kreiner, as I said, would be desperate to not lose points to Pippi Inuk. And that's a 10 centimeter improvement, so that's another 30 points to try and hold on to that silver medal position. And whilst the ladies are on the long jump infield, well, you have the fourth heat, the men's 400 meters. They're out on track, they're getting ready. Well then, the South African then, Gabriel Alves Santos from Brazil. Devonte Archer then, Jamaica under 20 champion goes in seven. In six, Ibrahim of Lebanon. We haven't seen many Lebanese athletes so far, so he'll be wanting to do a great job for his country. In lane four then, Sabrua Derma from Poland, 51-3-2, his personal best. In lane three, Amir Mogadami from Iran. Having the passion, very patriotic Amir there in lane three. Alves de Santos will be hoping to gain some motivation from Alison de Santos, who took the bronze at Tokyo in this same event. Will he be inspired by his countryman? That's the Brazilian there. 52-3-3. Tavente Archer then in lane seven with the fastest time. The Jamaican champion, 50.43, arrived on Friday and he's arriving at this event in style as well. Already up on the Jamaican. Look at his hurdling technique. He is really low over the hurdles, a really nice technique. He almost looks like a, a sprint hurdler here. Oh, lost it a little bit there. Couldn't quite control his arms, but really strong. Athletes really have to work around this top bend then. Archer really powering home at the moment. Amir Mogadami as well from Iran. He's coming back strongly. The Brazilian though holding on in second at the moment. Looks like it's going to be Jamaica one, South Africa, Brazil two. Oh, just on the line. Archer 52-1-9. Alves dos Santos 52-2-7. Sobra Derma there, 52-6-0. And Mogadami there, 52-6-4. They're your top four. They will all make it through. Archer there, just maybe easing down as he approached the line because Alves dos Santos from Brazil then was a fast finisher in that fourth heat. 
but with the men, with the 400 hurdles, it's almost hard to do anything but the run the race flat out. You've got to hit your stride pattern all the way to that last hurdle, and then maybe you can ease off a little bit. And I think that's maybe what we see Devonte Archer do. And he, right, he has so much speed coming into that hurdle, coming, trying to attack that bend with that speed. Uh, but he controlled it well and came through for the victory. What I thought was interesting about Devontae Archer, he was the joint Jamaican champion with Roshan Clark that we saw in the first heat. They couldn't separate them. Uh, separated today by being in different races, but it'd be interesting to see those two go head-to-head -head again, either in the semi-final on Saturday or that final on Sunday. But a good victory there from Devontae Archer ahead of the Dos Santos from Brazil. He definitely eased down there as well, didn't he? Because it was... Um you were just carrying on that story. It was Clark, I think, who clattered the hurdle, didn't he? In that race in the Jamaican Championships. So clattered the hurdle and still came joint champion. It was a pretty great feat, but it was this man who has been crowned as the Jamaican champion. Can't wait to see those two go head to head if they get put in the same race a little bit later on. Because Russian Clark came fourth his heat, heat one. We do, though, have an um, announcement to bring you. We have a disqualification in one of the previous events here. This is Iraq Doha Ali Ahmed then getting disqualified. Again, running on the line. We've been seeing this, haven't we, a few times before. This was in heat three. He went in lane three there, and again, they have something to appeal, but if you're running on that line, we've seen it a couple of times already in these championships, you're not going to get away with it. It's a world championship, of course. No, and they, the officials are being really strict on, on those lane infringements, this champi these championships, as they should be. We can see this women's heptathlon long jump and Cossack on the runway for her second round jump. First time over six meters, that's 6.03. Apologies, she's got a personal best of 6.30. So this is a previous territory, previous territory for the 16 year old Cossack. She represented Croatia in the individual six, the 60 meter hurdles in a standalone event, European indoors. She's the Balkan under 20 hurdles champion, but she's doing the heptathlon this week. Just 16 years old, doing really well to put these events together. Not being phased then that she is a, a young youngster, the youngest in the field, of course, because you can't be 19. So these girls, the other girls could be a couple of years older than her. And, you know, she's still really up there and getting PBs, putting in some great performances, not being phased by this big stage that she's found herself on so early in her career, just shows the quality of this athlete. And she will actually get another chance if she likes in two years time. The next time out is in Cali, of course. So um, she may even decide to, to go to the next World Under-20s as well. Well, she's so lucky that Merit being a European athlete, she'll have that European Under-20s and the Under-23s. Uh, which is an age group championship that, that they do in Europe, which I think is another lovely stepping stone as you look towards those senior championships. But we can see these male 800 meter runners lacing up their spikes, sticking on their leg numbers. Nervous final few, few moments using these baskets they have in Kenya. We saw a wonderful picture of the basket carriers with these baskets on their heads, uh, which was a lovely touch. Usually they're just a, a plastic. Not, not as pretty as these ones, the ones that you normally get in an athletics meeting, but it's great to see these more traditional fabric uh, baskets the Kenyan local organising committee are using for our athletes. I think if I was in that corner, I'd be asking if I could take one home. <laughs> They'd look great in my bathroom. <laughs> it's a great, a great bag for life. You answer. Nice woven sack, but there's a, a wonderful pictures online of, of the quorum staff with them balanced on their head. So this is the final heat of the men's 400 meter hurdles in lane seven. We've got Arma Abedabed from Qatar. Who can forget after Rahman Sambo with his brilliant bronze medal in Doha in 2019. I'm sure Abed will be looking to be the next great Qatari hurdler. Abella of Colombia inside him. 
We've no lane five. Hinti of Morocco hasn't taken to the start line, but Bivak from Iran will occupy lane four. 51.76 to his name. And then in lane three, Oscar Alund of Sweden, European junior silver medalist. He was the Swedish champion in 2020. Looking to add some more metalware to his cabinet to this week with the European junior, to his European junior silver medal. He's the fastest in this field. And in lane two is Campbell of India. 52.49 for the Indian athletes so far this season. He's got that tight inside lane. Can he keep his sights on Oscar Elland outside of him? This is the fifth and final heat. Athletes looking for the first four places that will automatically qualify them for Saturday's semi-final. Starter already telling them to stand up. Sometimes it's a technical difficulty. Sometimes it's positioning hurdles around the track. They might have been disrupted by other athletes, but just a few more minutes for these men to wait. How would you feel, Rachel, when there's a delay to start like this? It's almost you've got yourself psyched up and ready, and then you've got to find another minute or 90 seconds to stay composed. I guess this is something you practice. You know, at this top level, I hope you'd have covered all eventualities, really, or your coach would have gone through everything with you because a coach is still paramount in a youngster's career when they're only 19 years or below. So the coach probably would have said, don't worry if we have to reset for the start. You know what to do. You still know your game plan. Nothing changes. So just go back and, and put it all back in, into practice, how we've practiced it at home, and I'm sure they won't be phased. Well, we'll see. Campbell of India in one, Elunda Sweden, the fastest in the field. Bivak in four, Hinti in five. Hasn't taken to the start line. A bellow in six and a bed in seven. Just five athletes in this final heat of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Set. False start there. We will have a look at the replay, have a look at those reaction times, see if we can figure out who might not be taking part any further today. Well, that is what happens then. We said they should expect this to happen, but we think it could be lane seven. Watch the top of your screen then. The Qatari athlete. Hannah's nodding her head. She's thinking she can see what the officials are seeing there possibly got out a bit too fast. Let's get confirmation of that. We'll wait to see where the official walks up to and holds that card up to one of these athletes and just says, unfortunately, it is you. You'll take no further part in this competition. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a bed, doesn't it? He gets the red signal. He's questioning it. He's saying, me? It's got to walk off the track, Hannah. That's disappointing. You can see that reaction time, 0.085. It's too fast. And a bed will exit the competition. And we're down to four men in this final hit. So re-watch this start. Our reference point, we've got the Colombian on the inside to start much later. Uh, so it suggests that Arma a bed, a bed did start too early, but he's... Uh, yeah, so he will exit and go back and get his kit and take no further part. Maybe there's a 4x4 four four later for him in the week. But now we're down to four athletes, um, all of which will progress to the semi-final on Saturday. Big shame then, the athlete from Qatar, but like Hannah said, he'll get another chance. But this makes this heat possibly a little bit easier for the men still left in it. It was his first global championships as well, Hannah, so maybe lacking a little bit of experience.
They run their best ever, you know, performances. So I don't actually know, some of them might not, but great for all of these four to go through, of course, because we want to see a full house in the semis and in the final. So apologies, we think you lost we think you lost our sound for a little bit, but we are back now and we can show you the rerun of this final heat of the men's 400 meter hurdles. False start from Ama Abedabed of Qatar left just four athletes in this final and force automatic qualification spots up for grabs for the semi-final. So all four of these men will qualify for that semi-final, but they gave us a race anyway. You can see Oscar Elund of Sweden just gliding through this last 100 metres. Looks like a training run for him, to be honest. And Nader Abello of Colombia running really well out there in lane six as well. These two were your first and second. Uh, Lund, your European junior silver medalist, Swedish champion, coming through to take the victory. Abello in second, Vivak in third, and Campbell of India progressing to Saturday's final, semi final, in fourth place. So, Congratulations to that field, and we'll bring you the result of that race now. Yeah, absolutely. So Oscar Allen then takes the top spot, 52.77. Abello from Colombia, 52.87. Be back then, Moran, 54.27. And the Indian athlete, the fourth and final automatic qualification spot, Rohan Campbell, 55 flat. His time gets slightly rounded up there. Unfortunately, we had. Hinty didn't start, and then that awful disqualification for being a bit too fast out of the blocks for Amar Abed Abed there from Qatar. Bowing out of his first ever global championships. Disappointment for him. So now we'll see Saga Vanenin in her third and final jump in the heptathlon. 5.98 so far. She has got a personal best and a season's best of 6.34. I think she set that in that European Junior Championships that she won with a massive PB, a 400-point four, PB to go over 6,000 points for the first time at that European Junior Championships. Third attempt here in the World Junior Heptathlon in Nairobi. 6,271 points, a finished junior record at those European Junior Championships. She has got the lead today. She's not, she's not scored quite as many points as she did in Tallinn in that championships, but still a commanding victory so far. This was her final round jump. So she can prove on that 5.98, she's got to her name so far. And no, 5.87, so her best mark will be 5.98, but that's a nice 843 points for our current leader in the women's heptathlon. Well, Zooks then for her third and final attempt at this women's long jump heptathlon. Her best so far in the, set, in the first round, 6 0 4. Let's see what the Hungarian can do in her third round attempt then. PB actually indoors, 607. Quite close to that. 604 outdoors here. Nice fast approach on the runway. Reaction, hand to her head. I mean, it's either wiping off some sand there or doesn't quite like what she's just achieved. Let's see if that betters than the 604 she got from round one. She doesn't look too happy with that. Waiting anxiously to see.
Well, the 800 meter men's heats then coming your way now. Hannah and I very excited for this one, one of our favorites. In lane seven there, Jakob Davidek went to the European Youth Olympic Festival. First there back in 2019. Inside of him from Portugal, David de Garcia. And then Germa, then from Ethiopia, goes in five, 146.98. His personal best then on screen for you there. He'll be one to watch. Then from Kenya, Noah Kabet. First in the trials here. We know the Kenyan history in this event. Obviously, David Rudisha being a champion in these games before. They eyed there. Eritrea, 146.19. And Shentatev from Algeria goes into 150.09, his personal best. Seven athletes in in his first heat of the men's 800 metres. First three in each heat qualify. Next four fastest advance to semi finals, which are on Saturday. Bit of a rest then for these athletes. Noah Kebet then has the fastest time, 145.11. What can the Kenyan athlete do? from lane four they'll break of course with 100 meters always looking really fast in his first 100 meters to try and get a really great spot then when they all merge into the inside lane Kibet then taking his time in doing so takes almost 100 meters so it's Kibet from Germa then leading away the first 200 meters 25 3 3 on the clock looking strong at the moment is the Kenyan Hannah and I think uh Breaking gradually like that when you hit that break is definitely the smart thing to do. We see some falls when the fields come together too quickly off that break, but Quebec negotiated that really well. You touched on the history for Kenya in this event. They've got first and second in this championship in the last three events, and Quebec looking to carry on that tradition. So watch the bell there, 51.60 for 400 metres. This is their final lap, of course, two laps contested in the 800 metres. This is where they'll start to wind up the race here on the back straight. A couple of moves may be made, but at the moment it's really Noah Kebet from Kenya taking control of this. No one's really challenging at the moment. 200 metres to go. Can the Ethiopian there, Gurma, put in a late surge? So one, nearly two meters, the lead now. He's stretching that lead, two and a half meters. But watch Davidic there. He knows what it takes to be a championship performer. He's been at the European Youth Olympic Festivals and the, the Olympic Festival. He's had medals in both, but it is very much Quebec who is stretching this lead. 156.72 from Germa, from Davidic there. That was such a controlled race from start to finish. I look very comfortable there, Noe Kabet. That was commanding victory and a good run from Davidek there as well. He made a good move down the back straight. Maybe we'll see it again in the replay, but he could tell some of the other athletes were tiring. He moved himself out of that and caught up onto those top two to try and get himself that automatic third qualification point. But Germa looked in control as well, just doing enough to get that second place. But it's exciting to get an endurance event underway today. Kenya is so strong in the endurance event, such a strong tradition and love of these events in this country. Um, and I'm excited to see a whole load of 800 meter heats this morning. Yeah, looking really controlled and strong. Really slight athlete is the Kenyan, Kibet. Not very great in stature there, but really showing his power. Looking really strong. Gurma couldn't quite live with the pace. For the Czech athlete, having a great run as well to finish third and get an automatic spot. And I'm sure, again, we mentioned the history at this event, but Quebec will have also seen what his countrymen did at the Olympics as well. One, two in the 800 meters there for career. And then Rotich, of course, so can you have such a strong history here and will want to take home the gold medal in these under 20 championships once again. Confirm those results for you now. So it was a victory for Noah Kibet, 146.70 from Hermes Germa, 147.48, and Jakob Davidek, 147.84. PB for the Algerian Chinatef there with 149.19 as well. Three automatic qualifiers, and we will take another four non automatic qualifiers into Saturday's semi final.
bring you then all the qualifiers for the men's 400 meter hurdles semi-finals then top spot goes to dennis Novoseltsev, 50 88 jamaica in second 50 90 that's a pb for clark there a couple more pbs you can see on screen the kenyan kit home 51 3 1 Kibenjet there, 51-41, another PB. Another PB there for Magadami from Iran, 52-6-8. Again, picking out a couple of notable performances. Bonacci, 52-7-9 with another PB for Hungary. Some great times there. Stefan Jancic making up the times on that sheet before we finish with the Indian, Rohan Campbell, 55 flat. We saw him, if you remember, in that final heat of those men's 400 meter hurdles, getting that automatic qualifying spot. That was quite a, a tough heat because there were so many things going on. So great for the Indian athlete there to keep himself composed and make it through to his semi-final and probably what's his first ever championship here. And what about Cesar Perra as well? He looks so happy on the start line. I bet he is delighted to get another attempt um, at racing here in this stadium. But we've got a few more of these men's 800 meter heats to go first. You can see, see them getting checked by the officials. All the officials will check that the numbers are on correctly for the athletes. They'll have timing chips in the front of these numbers. That gives us the electronic timing that's uh, so, so, so great. But you can see them just making sure the bibs are put on correctly. They'll check their spikes, give them their leg numbers. All very officious. So this is the second heat of the men's 800 meters. See a Jamaican there, Hall in lane seven. Lane six is Kapsir Lewalski. We've lost one pole, one of the fastest ra races we were expecting today, but Lewalski is out there representing Poland instead with a PB of 146.72. To his inside is Abdullah Hassan of Canada, 146.16 for the athlete from Toronto. He's the fastest in this field. To his, his inside is Sokela and Al Yari. And then we have Mahadi of Qatar, 148.41. And completing the lineup is Costa of Italy, 149.81. Just being given some new leg numbers. Those leg numbers are important for the photo finish. Maybe his, his leg numbers came flying off when he was doing his final few, str few strides. Here we are again, Al -Haz Hafez Mahadi of Qatar. 148.41 already this season. I'm sure he'll fancy his chances of getting in the first three and automatically qualifying for the semi-final on Saturday. But Kapsir Lewalski as well from Poland. Um, Patrick Dobek picking up that fantastic bronze medal in Tokyo. Um, starting a, continuing a strong tradition for Poland picking up middle distance medals. And they're off in this men's semi-final. It's a heat, heat two of the men's 800 meters. See a fast start there from Siobhan Hall, Jamaica. He wants that pole position as they break. You can see the, see the tickers on the track there. They can run 100 meters in lanes and then they break and it is Hall of Jamaica taking up that lead. 24.78 through the first 200 meters. They'll settle down now as they run, run this next few hundred meters. Hassan there of Canada got himself in a good position in second place, but Lewalski of Poland sitting on the inside, biding his time as they come through and 300 of this 800 meters. Well, Hassan of Canada possibly just using Hall as a bit of a pacemaker, not wanting to set the pace, but sticking as close to him as possible as we hit the bell in 53.15 then. Again, literally running two by two with the pole, sitting nicely behind them, waiting to make his move. Possibly we'll see it down the back straight. Hall coming under pressure here on the back straight. He's led for 500 meters, but Hassan looked cool, calm and collected on his shoulder. And it is Hassan now looking to take the lead into 200. 200 to go for the Canadian Hassan. 46-16, he's the fastest in the field and he's looking to show that in this last 200 meters. He's taken Kapsir Lewalski with him, but there's a charge coming from the Qatari. Keep your eye on El Havez Mahadi. He's a... Uh, Sticky on the inside then, can he get in the top four? Is Hassan in the lead? 
from Lewalski in second, the Jamaican doing well to hold on after starting fast. But it is a victory for Lewalski from Hassan, from the Jamaican Chaman Hall, and then it'll be a photo finish between Maddy for that. Maddy will maybe have held on, and Aldiari coming through for that fourth place. Maddy in fifth place on our screens at the moment. As we just came into that home straight, there was a couple of pushing and shoving from the Qatari athlete, Maddy and Al Yari of Yaman. But again, th th these things happen in 800 meter running. It's super physical. Um, I'm sure no one will have been impeded. There'll be no appeals ledged. But yeah, many a time you've come home with some spike marks in your calves and a bit of bleeding, and it, it's part and parcel of, of distance running. But Hall set the pace, didn't we? Thought a lot of these athletes would use him possibly as a pacemaker. And they did just that. Hassan sitting on his shoulder and Lewalski as well and just biding their time. Didn't want to take the early pace. We might see things change as we progress through the rounds. But Hall, oh, they really had to fight for that third spot as he came into the last 100 metres because it put so much effort in in the previous seven. They did. It was a strong finish of Lewalski in the last 50. I feel that's a, a hallmark of Polish athletes. They finish so strongly. We see that across the events. Don't know if it's a, a Polish athletics team mantra, you know, hit that last 50 hard. Uh, but Lewalski looking smooth and strong, taking the victory from Hassan, but they will automatically qualify for the semi-final on Saturday. A nice long recovery for these athletes between this heat and that semi-final. <laughs> Well, heat two results then. Kowalski of Poland won 48-8-4. The Canadian Hassan won 49-0-4 in second. And the Jamaican, the final automatic qualification spot. Siobhan Hall won 49-4-7. Two PBs in that as well. Al Yari won 49-6-5 a PB. And Al Farsi, PB of 153-4. We are going to take a look at a replay of that first heat and you can see um, Las Germa just sitting, putting his feet on the, lane, on the line there. He was in lane five, but you can see he has just drifted to the inside and slightly out of his lane. We've seen a lot of this. We have said it's a junior athlete, so it might not be as experienced um, on this stage, but unfortunately that is a disqualification for the Ethiopian athlete, Germa even more disappointed because he did finish in second to Hannah. So he was one of the athletes who had qualified by right to make it through to the semi-finals, but that does now move up. Chetantef with a PB, 149-19. He'll be over the moon, the Algerian, to go through automatically and not have to wait and see if he makes those semi-finals. He's now going through commiserations for Germa, though. Disqualification in the men's 800 meter heat one. back to Keiko in the heptathlon and she's under a little bit of pressure, two fouls. If she can't register a valid jump in this third round, she won't score any points, which would be heartbreaking for the Finnish athlete. That'd be a second event not to do so as well. Remember, she clattered that hurdle in the 100 meter hurdles in the first event of the day. She'll want to get some points on the board here. She's an accomplished long jumper. She's got the second furthest personal best in the field of 6.31. But we do see this at every level in the heptathlon and the decathlon. So much pressure on each event. Keiko, oh, and she's bailed out there. Maybe she sent, she hit the board again. I just sensed that something wasn't right in her approach there. And that is so, so upsetting for the Finnish athlete. It'll be, if she does register a mark there, it will be way below her best of 6.31. See, she was good on the board, so it wasn't a foul jump, but something just not right with Keiko's run up today. It should be disappointing for her, but nonetheless, a great experience to have been here and taken part in this World Juniors, and hopefully something she can build on as she looks towards the rest of her career. She, for now, she's got 4.59 to her name, which is not going to score her the points uh, she deserves in this event. Disappointing then for the Finnish athlete, but experience gained nonetheless that's really important because we know how important these events are
to also help keep young athletes in this sport because you know there is a bit of a dropout rate which we, which we hate to see so athletes coming to these events and getting the experience and having fun which we heard a couple of the athletes mention in one of the earlier events they put on instagram i'm loving being here part of this team and a lot of these athletes are posting on social media so you can you know go and check them out on their social channels and see exactly what they are talking about at these events. It's great to get a bit more colour and a bit more information about them. Well, it looks like an, a bit warmer today Ooh, with that sun out. We didn't have the sun out yesterday. It was overcast and 15 degrees yesterday, but that sun will be beating down on these athletes, particularly these multi-eventers that are out there all day in it. Well, the third heat in the men's 800. Demon there from the Virgin Islands. Roban from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Then we've got Mark Fandley, Romanian, 149.96. In lane five, though, Ethiopian, Wold. He's got a PB in those FPK games in Hengelo. Choba then in lane four from South Africa, 148.80. His best, the Kenyan, though. Second in the Kenyan trials, Juan Yoni, 145.81 to his name. And then on the inside then from France, Mizian, 148.04 for the French athlete. Tomic as well goes in to the Serbian athlete. Wold then in lane five. 146.85. Okay, the Kenyans, though, again, will be very strong in this heat. Boasting the, the best time in the field in lane three. The Kenyan then breaking and setting the pace in this third heat. Who is going to go with him? Tomic then sitting on the shoulder. The French athlete just tucked in behind. Wanyoni there wasn't that fast through the first 200 meters, not as fast as we've seen in the other heats. So perhaps a reluctant leader, but the rest of the field happy to let him string it out in front of his home crowd. Yeah, there's a few people there, and anyone that is there uh, from the volunteer side will surely be cheering on Wanyoni of Kenya. So they come to take the bell. He's got a bit of a gap on the field. 52, he's put his foot down in that second lap. And you can see what that's done to the rest of the field. They've almost missed the break and he's gone. And now they've got to work hard to get back on to terms with him. 52 is fast for a 400 meters, even in the men's 800 meters. He's stretching the field here. He obviously only came second in the Kenyan trials. We saw Noah Quebec go in heat one. He was first there. But Choba is really trying to, to go with this pace, isn't he? The South African there and, and Wold as well from Ethiopia. And the French athlete, Mazina, he's, he's really sprinting around this final corner here. They're going to come into the 100 meters, but they've got such a lead at the Kenyans by about five meters. Nothing is slowing him down. We would expect him to be the under 20 champion. He's not, he only came second and look at the power on this athlete, the French athlete finishing really faster, but the Kenyan is, is easing up on the line. Well, what a fantastic last lap there for Wanyoni. He just got to jump on the field. I don't know why or how they let him run away from them, but Mezzanine there in second place, Walde in third and Roban in fourth. 146.53 then for your winner, 147.25 for Menzina and then Wold 149.20. Those three go through by right, automatically qualified for the semi final. But one year, he got a class act there. Did not expect that, especially in a heat. You might expect it in the semi finals or the final, but to run that fast, go off from the gun in that fashion in a heat, I guess he wanted to prove a point, Hannah. I think they have, I think so, and they have got decent recovery to Saturday evening. I think you can run hard today um, and recover by Saturday, particularly um, if, if you're used to running at this level. We are at altitude, and I think we will see some of our athletes suffer, but maybe not one year. He might be comfortable at this altitude. He's used to racing this stadium, probably used to training at altitude. Um, he will progress through these rounds without that phasing him, but it might catch up with some of our other athletes as we look at these endurance events over the next few days. Well, great. 
for Kenya there, Mwanyoni. And when we get a chance, I really want to tell you some stories about Hannah's time training at altitude because she's got some crackers. Um, and I'd love you to, to hear about some of her experiences. Not so good, some of them, but let's get confirmation then of these heats in the men's 800 meters, the third heat. So Mwanyoni then, 146.51 to take top spot. Mazina there, 147.28 PB for him, the French athlete in second. And Wold, the Ethiopian athlete, 149.2. A national under 20 record then in fourth for Roban, 149.41. He's from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, so great for him. And then Demanda PB, 158.5 from the Virgin Islands. So two of the Islanders in this third heat going really strongly, which is so great to see. So we're back over to this heptathlon. This is the third and final jump for Enuk. She's had a strong, strong couple of days overall already, but adding to it with this long jump. She had a personal best, equal personal best in the high jump. Personal best in the 100 meter hurdles to start off her campaign. Personal best in the 200 last night. A great long jump competition so far. Pippi Enoch, she's in third place overall before this event, but I do think that her showing in this hurdles, in this long jump, could see her overtake Sophie Kreiner of Austria and move into silver medal position. This is her third and final jump. Just reflect, reflecting with her coach as she moves through these events. It's actually Enoch's birthday today. Happy birthday. You've just turned 19. So what a day to have your birthday at these World Under 20 Championships. And she is now going to be hoping it's the icing on her birthday cake, which she'll be eating later, Hannah, not right now, um, that she gets a medal, of course. That would be a great birthday present, wouldn't it? So you can see that 30 centimetres um, ahead of Kreiner. That will give her 96 points more than Kreiner in this competition, which I think will be enough to move into that silver medal position as we look forward to the last few events. But here is Mukabrod of Ukraine, 5.43 so far, 5.86 her best. I'm sure she'd like those extra 40 centimeters. Mukabrod with her third and final attempt. Pretty neutral body language out of the pit there for the Ukrainian. Way behind the board, that might have something to do with it. She has, no, those points would have helped her out in her overall standings or her overall point score. Uh, doesn't Un look too happy with that, does she? Really didn't like what she produced there. Waiting for confirmation of exactly how far it was. So it is the furthest of her competition with that 563, 738 points for her overall. But here are those standings from the long jump. The Croatian then, Clara Kozak, 613, 890 points that gets her. The Hungarian, Sabina Suk, 604. Only two athletes over that six metre mark there on that one but great results for the rest of the field in the heptathlon this is the standings and after five of seven events the finnish athlete saga vanenin she's the european under 20 junior champion from only a few weeks ago leading the line still 4481 points 275 points ahead of the second place athlete enoch of course who we've been bigging up as well pippa lotta enoch so Happy birthday to you, 19 today. Sophie Kreiner from Austria sitting in third. This is exactly where they're getting their points from though. So you can just see that building each time and this is where they're currently sitting. So 4206 for Enoch, and then 4189 for third for Kreiner. Obviously the bigger the cylinder there, the more points they got. But we'll bring you that again after six events, hopefully bring you up to speed on the heptathlon. So this is our fourth and final heat of the men's 800 meters. So Asselmini there, France, 148 dead. 
So his compatriot negotiate that previous heat well, coming second, coming in second place. Yegorov, authorized neutral athlete, and Leonardo de Santos. He's the best of the South Americans that we're going to see in this 800 meters, 146.97. Francesco Pacini there of Italy, and Mohamed Ali Gunend of Algeria, 145.47. Secured that time at the Doha Diamond League earlier this year. Mustafa there of Sudan and Ericsson of Canada completes your lineup in lane one. Guined of Algeria is the fastest in the field by quite a bit, second and a bit. He's on the 145 47, and next is Leonardo Santos with 146 97. But this is this final heat. He may have been able to keep an eye on the results of the previous three heats. There are three automatic spots up for grabs in this final heat. Four non-automatic qualifying spots available as well. Will someone take it out and make it a fast heat? We often see the fastest heat being the fastest. The last heat being the fastest because they're desperately trying to vie for those non-automatic qualifying spots. And it does look competitive for who wants to pick up the lead. It is Pernici of Italy happy to take up the running in this early stages of this final heat. Doesn't take the pace out quite like we just saw in the third heat. But Panici then acting possibly as a pacemaker for the French athlete behind him. Followed in third by the Algerian athlete. Let's see exactly what the pace is at the bell with 400 meters to go. 53, slightly slower actually than the third heat we just saw. These athletes, if they want to get through, in the, the next spots to go in the semi-finals. They'll have to push on the pace now. But still, the Italian, Panici, is holding the line here. Looks like he's possibly struggling on the back straight as a few more athletes go past him. Panici is going to come under pressure. Has he judged his race right? We see Gunend moving, Gunend moving through. He's looking smooth. This is within his capabilities. And that was a great move from Santos down the back straight. Getting himself in position before he hit the bend. That means he can run the shortest line round the bend. Santos in a good position, as is the Frenchman. Al Samini has got himself into a good position as well. An authorized neutral athlete, Yegorov in fourth place but it is El Gwened going to come through is going to come through for the victory for Algeria comes for looking around eases down over the line Santos for third for Brazil and it is a second Frenchman into the semi-finals automatically with Anselmini with the 150 91 for third position but comfortable victory for Algeria from Brazil from France those are our three automatic qualifiers for Gwened there with 148.79 Santos won 49-7-1. The French athlete then in third as well. Bagu Aned from Algeria walks off there after securing his spot. Let's see how it unfolded then. He was in three, of course. First 100 meters, got up pretty well, but then decided he wanted to sit behind Panici. And Al Salmini as well, the French athlete. So was in third with 200 meters already ran. But then it was the final 200 meters when he put his mark on this rate. Guaned there really stretching the field with 100 meters to go. Only the Brazilian Santos tried to go with him, but at this stage, they know it's the top three to go through. The French athlete, they're really fighting to keep hold of that third spot, not knowing that actually the fourth place athlete was quite far back there. Yeah, Gekorov made a brave bid to get into that top three with 200 to go, but he couldn't live with those top three. And you're right, El Samini could have looked over his shoulder and he's down, but you never want to ease down before the line. We've seen that already today. It's important to run all the way through that line. Confirmed victory there for Guined of Algeria, 148.83. Leonardo Santos, 149.76. And Paul Asselmini, third place in 150.23. We'll tidy up those non-automatic qualifiers for you a bit later, but a great personal best for Mustafa, 159.55 there in eighth place as well. Absolutely great for him. Going under that two-minute mark is always an achievement for any athlete, isn't it? And he actually didn't even have a time next to his name coming into this, so 
possibly hasn't ran this event that many times before. So Mohammed Mustafa there with a personal best under that two minutes. Oh, got some wildlife as well. <laughs> Maybe they've come from the Nairobi National Park, only 25 kilometers away, Hannah. Uh, let's have a qualification summary then for the women's 400 meter hurdles. Heidi Salomon from Finland, 58-1-2, a PB to get into that final. Savannah Sutherland, 58-4-5, unbeaten still here. Ludovine Ober from France, 58-4-6, but watch that name, Garel White, Jamaica. Not as fast as a few other athletes here, 58-6-5. Unbeaten again, the Jamaican athlete. Can't wait to see Jamaica go up against Canada in this final. Those two unbeaten. Someone's got to get beaten in the final. Who is it going to be? Bridgen of Jamaica again, strong running from her, 58-8-8. And Kazmarek as well, 59-3-2, Polish athlete. She also makes it through to the final. Here is the conclusion of the qualification from the men's heats. These are the athletes that will contend the semi-finals on Saturday. Led by Emmanuel Wagnoni, he led Gunter Tape 146.51. Noah Kibet as well, 146.70 for Kenya. 1-2 on that list at the moment. Can they keep that going into the final? You can see the non-automatic qualifiers down there as well. Handel Robin. The brilliant national record, 149.51, 149.41. A personal best there as well from Chenitev of Algeria, 149.19. So two Algerians will contend that final as well. You can see Leonardo Santos in second place in that previous heat. Asselmini as well. So that last heat was the slowest but they still got those automatic qualifying places. But Choba of South Africa, 150-20, our, our final non-automatic qualifier into the final. Congratulations to those men. Hannah, in the rounds of 800 metres, is it a chance possibly to play with tactics a bit as well? Obviously, we saw some front running. We saw some people sitting on other athletes' shoulders. Is this again a chance to maybe do something a bit different as the rounds go forward? So when it comes to the final, you have your A and your B game up your sleeve, ready and waiting. Absolutely. I personally, as an athlete, I would like to practice my tactics going through the rounds. I would, I would hope to run similar tactics all the way through the rounds, um, play to my strengths. But you have to react to what the rest of the field look like as well. So yeah, you'll be feeling your capabilities, your. Um, yeah, how you want to negotiate the rounds, but also it's your look to look at your competitors. Some of these athletes will never have raced against these athletes, um, and they want to see, you know, what they, what's their speed like, what, where do they like to make their moves. So I'm sure the coaches will be looking back at these tapes and analysing, analysing what's gone on. You know, particularly who makes a move down the back straight, who really wants to push for a lead on the break, who wants to lead through the bell, um, and you can start build a, building a picture of what the next rounds might look like. Well, these are the females then getting ready for their 800 meter heats, which are coming a little bit later. We'll see if what Hannah's just been speaking about comes into play from these athletes. What will they do? What tactics will they put into play in their heats? We're very excited for this event coming on track shortly. We'll see if we can see any of the athletes under the two minutes, which is always a massive achievement for these females. We'll have to wait and see, though, how fast they're going to go in the heats. A long way to go until that final, of course. Well, the heptathletes then getting ready for the javelin. That's another event that they have to contest. Of course, they have seven events these females have to do. Five already done. This is their sixth event. They had another throwing event, of course, the shot put. We saw that yesterday. Vananin is the lady who is currently in the lead. Can anybody get close to the Finnish athlete? That's the second Finnish athlete on your screen as well. Kaiko. So here we will see Kaiko. She will open up this javelin competition for the women. Personal best of 37.16, season's best of 37.01 for the Finnish athlete. 
well below her best in that long jump a few minutes ago. That's the other element of these multi-events. You've got to park an event, whether it's gone well or it's gone badly, you need to park it and focus on the next event. And Nia Keiko has done really well to stick in here after a rough first event. She really hit a hurdle hard. Um, I think she had three or four seconds off her best in that 100 meter hurdles um, in the very first event. But she's still out there. She's got one one distance to her name in this javelin throw heptathlon. Wait for that measurement. And next up on the runway is Pippi Enoch. She's moved into silver position, silver place. Hoping to, oh, apologies, Kozak. Another athlete in green, Koz, oh, in blue. Kozak there of Croatia on the runway, the 16 year old. Has played around with different events internationally, but she is here for the heptathlon today. Forty sixty, her best personal best. This is one of the events that I love because you can watch exactly how your performance is unfolding in front of you. You just stop and wait and see. Oh, where has it landed? Outside, unfortunately, the area designated to be measured in, slightly off to the right there. So she'll go back and and think about that. I don't think the wind's that strong to have been much of a factor in that. Unfortunately, she just. Let it go at the slightly the wrong point. So that will not count for Kozak there. Two more attempts for the athlete then from Croatia. Not to worry at this stage. Well then this is your current leader. Uh, ah, well, it is Saga Valenin, but we're just waiting to see if that name will come up. We're pretty sure that's our leader there. I had to just correct myself because it came up as, as Kreiner, but this is your leader. She's wearing the green well over that 40 meter mark for Valenin. 48.88 her best. She launches that javelin, doesn't she? Let's see where that measures not quite 48 i don't think not that i'm an expert in judging distance throwing events but let's see here what the finnish athlete can get then 42 84 to start her campaign in this javelin throw i think whatever the situation in the competition as it unfolds, it's still an opportunity to learn. So yes, Van Anin, she's got a sizable lead. And you'd say this could be her event to lose overall, but at some point in her career, she's gonna come under pressure at each one of these events and she needs to learn how to deliver uh, whatever's going on in the competition. So I'm sure her coach is encouraging her to do that in this javelin competition. Sliver she is up now for Lithuania. Not happy, shaking her head. Sleva Vivuce there. Doesn't really like what she's seeing, but we'll um, wait for confirmation. 32-39. Sleva Vivuce, she had a good high jump. But the shot was disappointing, and it's uh, you really think she's got that potential to put together a, a string of really good seven seven events, um, and it will happen at one point. It'll be very exciting for her. But Valeria Mukabrod, another athlete, has hit a few PBs yesterday, not so far today. With Mahodbrod, 39, 32 to her name. Oh, that could be close to her best there getting up towards that 40 meter mark for the Ukrainian. Some Rook abroad here. Have to wait for a distance for her, but it is Enoch on the runway, Pippi Enoch. Fantastic long jump, but seen her jump into that silver medal position ahead of Sophie Kreiner. She's got 17 points over Sophie Kreiner. 
such a small gap between silver and bronze, but with one meter equaling 15 points in this event. And Pippi Anuk has got a huge personal best. She's got a lot of lot big cushion over Sophie Kreiner in this javelin throw. So if she can throw to her form of 140, uh, 46.10, she should hold on to that silver medal position and open up that gap over Sophie Kreiner. We should have... Um birthday balloons coming when she comes on and the graphic needs to change doesn't it to 19 now because happy birthday it's her birthday today from yesterday today the graphics change 18 to 19 um she's just here to confuse us isn't it the 19th of august is her birthday which is today i wonder if you'd, you'd rather have your birthday on your second day, wouldn't you? Absolutely. She, can, she knows <laughs> she can do something tonight. She can switch off and enjoy her birthday tonight. If it had been yesterday, she had to be all business. But hopefully Pippi Anuk will have some silverware to celebrate her birthday. Sooks then is the next athlete on your screen. Let's see what she can do. Nicely over that 40 meter mark smiles this time from Zooks. She likes that much better than her first attempt. It's a really good throw for the Hungarian. She's got a personal best of 41.86. So that could be close to it. That looks close to a PB possibly. We'll wait and see. Has she thrown a personal best? Yes, look how happy she is with that 43. Zero five, personal best for Zooks in the first attempt. Forty-three zero five. <laughs> I love to see that. Reliving the throw there in real time. I just hit it and I got a PB. <laughs> Keiko here with her second round throw. It's a foul in the first round for her, but she has got a valid throw with that second attempt. Personal best of thirty-seven meters sixteen. Doesn't look like she's quite up there but it will be a valid throw for the Finnish athlete. Keiko then 34.80. Now first attempt 33.78, second attempt 34.80. The cool room then, the women's 800 meters. Bit of a chance for some jumping around. And this is the first heat of the women's 800 meters. Della Gianni of Greece in lane eight. She was fourth at the European Junior Championships. The Greek under 20 championship, seven Greek age group titles to her name. Really racking them up. And Dagan Chu of Ethiopia in lane seven. 205.53 for the Ethiopian athlete. And Yababi of Eritrea. 208, Petra Klodzik of Slovenia, just 16 years old. And the first of our Kenyans, Jep Koskai, 203.76. She is the fastest in the field. Lane three is Zita Urban, the European Junior 1500 meter champion from Hungary, doing the 800 today. And completing the lineup, Kahawal Laje from Sri Lanka, 207.08 in lane two. Zita Urban, as I said, the oh, European no, Junior 1500 meter champion. She's done the steeplechase at the European <laughs> Youth Olympics, but it is 800 for her today. <laughs> Underway in heat one of the women's 800 meters. We saw some fantastic men's heats, very exciting. But it's the turn of the women now as they run in lanes. Lanes for the first 100 meters, Jep Koskai. She's ranked number three in the event overall. She's fighting for that lead, or is she going to let the Ethiopian overtake her? She's not. This is her home stadium. She wants the lead through this first 200 meters. 28.51. Great running from the young Kenyan athlete. Kenya with such a strong tradition here. Nancy Langat 
won this event in 2000 and went on to win the Olympics in the 1500. Janet Jekoskai won this event in 2002 to go on to run an Olympic silver medal. But a fantastic pedigree in this event. The Kenyan athlete does have the lead at the moment. Somewhere between a metre and a half to two metres over the Ethiopian athlete as they move towards the bell. And they hit that bell in 58.84 as well. Can the Ethiopian athlete then keep this lead? Sheila just got her Kenya leading at the moment from Ethiopia in second. These two looking strong. The Greece athlete though in third, not really making a move at the moment. Got the speeds coming up on the graphic. Maximum speed so far, 28 kilometers per hour for Chepskovsky in first. She's powering home though, 600, 130. This is a good pace, Hannah. We're looking probably just over the two minute mark for these athletes. If they can hold this pace, this form five meter lead now for the second place athlete, Chep what can they do? Chepskovsky is striding away down the home straight. She could be on for a PB, her personal best is 203.76, but the Ethiopian Dagnachu wants to run all the way to the line. Dagnachu coming through second place for Ethiopia, 202.63. That will be a personal best for the Kenyan athlete and a third place there for Dalajiani of Greece to get that third and automatic qualifying spot. But a personal best for Jep Koskai in the first round and for second place as well. Dagnachu, great running from those athletes early doors. Della Gianni doing well to hold on to that third place. I think looking around her, knowing that that automatic place was hers as she looks towards that semi-final on Friday evening. You can't ask for more than that. Qualifying to the semi-final and two PBs in that first heat as well. Two minutes two is great time for, for these athletes. So the first 100 metres is always key, we've mentioned it. Getting out these two, getting into a great position. Kenya and Ethiopia there. Chepkovsky and Daganachu. Not really working together. Daganachu just sitting on the Kenyan's shoulder, but using her possibly as a pacemaker. But she got a great PB from 2.5 to 2.2 two in the end. So you can see how much she's working on that home straight. And the Greek athlete just behind her, making sure she stays safe in that third position. But it is the Kenyan, of course, Kenyan pedigree in this event. This is her home track. She'll have ran him many times before. She'll know how it feels if it's a fast track, if it's a slow track, easing off over the line to take that comfortable victory. Chep Koskai there from Daganachu in second. Walk in the park, Hannah, that face says, ah, that was easy, even though it was a PB. Well, good to take victory in a PB. You've got to say there's more in the tank. And it'd be interesting to see if there's any other front runners as we move through the rest of these fields that uh, could give Sheila Jepkoskai uh, a run for her money. But a personal best of 202.6. Aya de Nakchu of Ethiopia, 202.94 for another PB. And Elidia Gianni of Greece rounding out our automatic qualifiers. And a personal best for Urban there, 207.39 for the Hungarian athlete. Uh, she will sit back and see how the rest of the races go to see if she gets a non-automatic qualifying spot. Well, second round throws now in the javelin for the heptathlon. This is Kozak from Croatia. Over that 40 metre mark. Her best PB, 40-60, could be around that mark. No throw for Kozak in the first attempt, so... We know it's an attempt, we know it's going to be measured, but how far is it going to be measured at for the Croatian? Is it long? 40, 84. That is long, that's a PB. That's how long it is, by 24 metres. She must be happy with that. So next up we will see our event leader, Venonin. 42, 84 so far. She is the best javelin thrower in this competition with a personal best of 48, 88. Currently in second place overall, but that might have something to do with... That might change that result a little bit. 
And that's the sign of a champion. You want to win every event. You want to over win overall, but perhaps a little bit of stubbornness there from the Finnish athlete. I am the best javelin thrower in this competition, and I want to prove it. Not only do I want to score the highest points overall, but I want to win the event that I'm ranked highest in as well. 48-88 is her personal best, and that looks right up there for the European junior champion. And that has been measured as 49.22. So that is a personal best for Sargo Vinanen. And that should put a smile on her face as she moves towards the end of that heptathlon competition. Athletes then getting ready for the women's 800 meters. We have four heats to bring you. Great to see these athletes getting ready. That's actually heat three in the cool room there. We'll bring you heat two shortly. That's Pearson of Canada. 2714 her best time. The Italian athlete Pansini as well, also a 2-7 athlete. These guys have a few more minutes to wait though. This is the most nervy time for these athletes. Pujar as well in there. She's a fast athlete, 2-6 they will have to wait for heat number two before they get their chance. Well, this is heat two then, women's 800 meters. Sakima, she's been running 300 meter races for speed before coming into this. Nilsson of Belgium. She made the semi-finals of those Euros under 20. Couldn't progress any further than that, unfortunately. Cooper Gasper of Cuba. Fast PB. Two nine, two, sorry, 229, but season's best of 263. So hoping to go faster here. Amar Eritrea there. 271 is her personal best. And 16-year-old from Ethiopia here. Watch this athlete. Mekanen. 2361 16 to run a time like that. We know though these youngsters are doing the business in the 800 meters. Just remember the Olympic Games, two 19 year olds first and second there. USA from Great Britain, of course. On your marks. So youngsters controlling these events. <laughs> Nothing you saw that. World lead in this event, Athing Mo, of course, 155. She ran that in the Olympic Games. Obviously, didn't decide to come here because she'd just become an Olympic champion. So, probably a good decision, especially for these athletes. But let's see who breaks first after 100 meters. Looks like Nielsen there from Belgium and the Cuban athlete, Gasper taking the pace in this first one. Cooper Gasper and Nielsen. Nielsen, a very tall athlete there. Really slow this second heat, 30-43, making this look like a walk in the park. No one wants to take this pace on. So this is going to make things a little bit interesting. This is going to come down then to a last lap burn up or a 200 meter burn up. So someone's got to take this pace at some point because they'll want to have some non-automatic qualifiers from every event. If you're not in the top three, then it makes things a little bit more difficult. But some of these athletes might know they have the strength that is needed. Maybe it's Sik Sikamai. She's been running 300 meters for speed, but at the moment is Ethiopia 16-year-old Mekon on there. 106.53, Hannah, this is pedestrian. Makes me so nervous when heats are tactical like this. You, you worry about people getting tangled up and falling over, uh, but you worry about people not running to potential as well. There's going to be some really accomplished uh, women that miss out on this final. Mekanen is doing her best to take control of this race and speed it up. You can see Nielsen getting swallowed up there. I think keep your eye on Sakima of Serbia. You said she'd been doing some speed work. It might be interesting to see if that comes through in the last lap, but Mekanen at the moment from Cooper Gasper as we move through 600 in 138.92, eight seconds slower than the first heat. Yeah, Sikima though, she said she was worried a little bit about altitude, so if we do see her fading, that's possibly an indication of why, but Mekanen is still leading from Cooper Gasper, but Cooper Gasper is looking strong in the final 100 meters. Can she overtake the Ethiopian? Doesn't look like she can, but she doesn't need to. The top three are clear. Mekanen from Cooper Gasper, from Nielsen. They are your automatic qualifiers, 2-8-64. So different from the first heat, which we saw one in 
2 2 the first one, so much slower here. So I doubt that the normal somatic qualifiers will come from this heat. Depends. Maybe heat three and four will watch this. The Indian athlete there looking like she put a lot of work into that. Big disqualification as well. We're here in the last one, so we're going to give you some updates on that. God, there's drama happening all over the shop here. I was really impressed by Nielsen in that race, actually. She did a lot of the leading. She was a re reluctant uh, leader, but she came through for that third place. You see the athlete from the refugee team here as well, uh, Mebra Mekinen. Samuel there. Samuel, great. Is Samuel. Great that she was allowed to compete. That's uh, great we have the athlete refugee team, of course. OK, well, here we go. That's a quick replay then. Mekinen from lane two. Quite a tricky lane draw sometimes because the athletes do run out in front of you like we're seeing here. Cooper Gasper, though, your eventual runner-up, looking very controlled, but all these athletes should do. Nielsen as well, because it was 30 seconds for 200 metres. I would like to think I can still run that kind of pace. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe be competitive in a race like this. Micken and then had to wind up that second lap because it was slow as well at the bell. It was a... 66 at the bell. They did obviously run negative splits then to bring this home. Mecca and the 16 year old powering down that last 100 meters. Cooper Gasper hot on her heels, and then Nielsen third, but 2 8 then for that 800 meters. Yeah, I was really impressed by all three of those dealing with that pace change. As you were saying it then, it was 30, 36, 32, 30. That is a hard way to run a 208, but they all look strong doing that. And that, for me, gives com me confidence for all three of those. We look towards the semi-final and the final. Yeah, because you never know what's going to happen in the next round. But confirmation of that heat two, 800 metre result. Mekinen, 2862. Cooper Gasper, 2906. Nilsson, 2.944, a PB for Samuel. The athlete refugee team, 2.43.76. That's a great result there. Amar, 2.13.26 as well. So some great running in that second heat. Mentioned it before, though. We did, unfortunately, have a disqualification in heat one. The Kenyan athlete, the winner, Chepkovsky. Lane infringement. I thought I saw that, Hannah, on our replay. I wasn't going to say it because we had no confirmation. She runs on the line on the first 100 metres. You have to run it in your lane. It's just part of the rules. And then you break 100 metres, then you can run in any lane you like, usually the inside lane. Eritrean, there's been a question mark over her as well. So we're going to get confirmation if she made a mistake. She also made a mistake and was disqualified. So two athletes in there, they need to really be aware of the rules, Hannah. I'm sure they are, and they just get wrapped up in the moment. But being disqualified when you're running so well, like Chepkovsky is, she comes here with a PB of 2-3. She bettered that 2-2, two, two, but that won't even stand. The PB won't stand next to her name now. And that is such a shame. And I'm sure the team managers are going home, <laughs> back to their hotels and saying, guys, the officials are really, really paying attention to those lane infringements. But we are back with the women's heptathlon javelin throw. Enoch then for Estonia. What can she do? Can she better her score? Oh, it's long. Plus 40, it is long. Enoch then. Let's see how this unfolds. I so say she is trying to rack up those points ahead of Sophie Kreiner to hold on to that silver medal. She does better it, 44-1-2. Excellent. Good for Pippi Enoch. So this on Sophie Kreiner, she has thrown a PB 37.96. She's giving it everything uh, to hold on to that bronze and get back in contention for that silver. And this is the third of four heats in the women's 800 meters. Brenda Chabat from Kenya can she do better than her compatriot? Such a fantastic race, but a disqualification for Sheila Jepkoskai in that first round. Ross Melia of Switzerland says her rival is Selena Bouchal. She's a fantastic Swiss 800-meter runner. 
On her inside in lane six is Lorena Rangel Bateras. She is from Mexico, but she is at Louisiana State University. We've seen a few athletes that run for that university already today. Pula of in uh, India in lane five. Lane four is Avery Pearson of Canada. Lane three, Federica Passini. And lane two, Pavla Dukova of Czech Republic. Czech national champion competed at European Juniors, but didn't make that final. Valentina Rosamilia. A Swiss athlete was third at the European Juniors. So lane seven, a Swiss athlete, already a proven championship performer with that bronze medal for the European Junior Championships. But can she navigate these heats of the women's 800 meters? All pretty even running in this first 100 meters before they break into lane one. Passini, or is it Chibet? It is Chibet of Kenya, happy to take up the early running, as we saw in the first heat from her teammate. Chibet from Puja, from Rosamila, 29-25. So very respectable first 200 from these women. It looks to be moving faster than that second heat, maybe on par with what we saw in the first heat. Bit of a different style from the Kenyan athlete. Bit of rocking arm movement she's got there. A little bit different to the Indian athlete in the back of her. Indian athlete just happy to sit and wait until the bell. Let's see what happens when we get the, the bell. It rings. It's one minute flat. Nothing happening yet. They're still biding their time here. Happy to let Chibet take the pace here from Pooja. Someone's going to make a move in a minute. Otherwise, Chibet may just get away from the rest of the field. Chibet doing really well here, but she's going to come under pressure from Rosamelia. You can see Rosamelia moving around on the outside, as is the Mexican Rangel Bateras as they come up to 600 meters to go. Pujar doing well to stick there on the inside. 134.50, they've slowed a little bit in that 1300, and you can see the effect on the field. They've bunched, but they're kicking now. Keep your eye on the Canadian, Avery Pearson. She's only raced twice this year, a season disrupted by the pandemic, but she looks fresh and full of running. Rosamelia sees the threat from the Canadian on the outside. She's looking round, am I in the top three? But Pearson strikes for home, striding away. Pearson looking strong, Avery Pearson, kinesiology student, Canadian under 20 champion, running fantastically in this opening round. It's going to be round about her personal best. Just 208 for the win there. Ross Amelia in second, Rangel Bateras of Mexico coming through for third. So it looked fast in that first lap, but it was a controlled second lap there from that field. An automatic qualification for those top three, but it is going to get tight for those non-automatic qualification spots. Pearson then overjoyed that she got the victory after only running twice this year. That's not, guys, something that you should take home. You should run more races than that, probably, if you want to be a champion. But so great, because she may have came into this a little bit nervous then if she hadn't had too many races under her belt to, to compare. But um, really controlled. She looks strong. I mean, it was only, you know, a two-way. I say only because these girls are going to run much faster as the rounds progress. We saw a 2-2 two -two already in the first heat, but... Really great running from all these athletes. Chibet then taking the early lead from Pooja, the Indian athlete. Rosamila, really tall athlete, really strong looking athlete as well. She looked controlled. I think she'll have something extra as the rounds progress. Didn't really seem to test her and she knows it's the top three. So has the experience there. Selena Bouchel, I think she says, you know, she's raced against her. She's a really experienced indoor athlete, especially so, you know, She'll know how these rounds work. She's looking around a bit there as she approaches this home straight. She goes, I don't really have to push. No one's really coming to challenge me now. So I can just uh, look around and go, I'll let Pearson go and save myself for the semis. No, you're right. Ross Amelia, she'll have experience in these age group rounds. And, and you can see that experience coming through. But perhaps Avery Pearson go, I haven't had many races. I want to have a go. I want to stretch my legs, see what's there. And Rangel Bateras of Mexico doing really well out of that group to come out as third for that automatic qualifying spot. We have a look at the full results. Rangel Batres was under pressure. She was in a large group, but she was the one that persevered, held her form, held her composure, and came through for that third place to join Valentina Rosamelia and Avery Pearson as automatic qualifiers in this third heat.
Shame there for the Indian athlete, Pooja. She looked really strong, didn't she? Really faded with the last 200 metres to go. 2.10.66 in the end for Pooja. And Chabet there, again, really struggling. As the, the athletes hit the bell, it was about 2.50 to go. She just could not go with that early pace. 2.12. 16 for Tibet, and she has a PB of 2.5 as well, so something didn't go quite right for the Kenyan athlete today. We're seeing such erratic pacing in these races. They're, these uh, women are really flitting around. The first heat they didn't, Jep Koskai, was very even, but those second, the second and third heats have been quite erratically paced, and I think the, the women are paying for that in that final 200 metres. Well, back to the javelin throw now in the heptathlon. Third round for the Lithuanian athlete, Macabrod. Let's see uh, how she gets on in her third attempt here. Oh. So, Macabrod on the runway over that 40 meter mark for the Ukrainian. That could be a personal best, 39.32. It's so her mark coming into this, coming into this event. She could have grabbed herself a brand new PB with that throw. And it was, that has been measured. It's come off my system as 40.81 for the Ukrainian. Fantastic personal best, 683 points. couple more people out watching today. Obviously, we're not allowed any fans here in the Kasarani Stadium. A couple of the athletes are on the screens, of course, though. Athletes, coaches, coaching staff, I'm going to say, because obviously you have to be under 19 here. Another coaching staff, hello, we can see you. Yes, you are on the big screens and actually being broadcast to quite a lot of countries around the world, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, uh, which is great to see. So many countries taking these World Under 20 Championships as well. We love to broadcast these races far and wide, so we get some new fans or continue to inspire the next generation of athletes. Well, this is the fourth heat of the 800 meter women's event. Sabo from Hungary goes in eight. Then we have the athlete from Ukraine, Spitalina Zuzec in 7.2402, her PB. Martinez of Spain goes in six. She decided to do the 1500 meters at the Euro under 20 championship. She came second in that. Seven athletes in this event. In lane one, Veronica Sadek. She's a really strong relay runner. She didn't start, unfortunately, in the Euro Under 20 Championships, but she's also got a lot of endurance because she's the national champion at 1500 meters, but dropping down the distance for this oh, event. Nice. But Zul Zek then of Ukraine with a 2402 PB. 100 meters in lanes, of course, until they break. Who is going to want to take this pace? They now know they have the advantage of knowing the other times. So surely this will be faster to make sure they can get as many athletes through from this heat as possible, because this is the final heat. Sadek then taking it out. But Zulek then now hitting the front with 200 meters in 30, 27 again. Slow in this heat. I thought they'd take the pace off, but maybe the athlete at the front, Zulek, there knows she has the, the speed. She does, a 2-4 athlete here. 56 is her PB for 400 meters, so can turn on the pace when she needs to. Zulek here for me. She's done well to go into the lead. Sadek did get it going. She got them through that 200 in, in, in that 30 seconds, but it was then Zulek was keen to keep this moving. 62. 
not as fast as we've seen in some of the other races, but it could be fast enough. Your non-automatic qualifying spots at the moment, Puja is the fourth of those in 210.66. So anything under 210 would get these ladies into the semi-final on Friday evening. Zolchek in the lead still with Sadek for company. But it's all to fight for in this final 250 meters. Three automatic qualifying spots, and anyone under 210 might have a chance of making that semi final. All these five athletes could potentially go through if they really put some pace now. Martinez, the Spanish athlete in third, she will go through automatically if she holds this position. But we do have the South African athlete, Haboshi. She's trying to hang on to these leading through. Can't quite at the moment. Can she find something in the last 100 meters? But it is Zulcek from Sadek and Martinez. There, your top three at the moment. Martinez looks around. 1500 meter specialist as well. She's got the strength. She's going to overhaul Sadek on the line. But Zulcek gets this victory easy. 2.764. Not the slowest heat, but definitely not the fastest either. So 2754 for Zulcek, Sadek goes 2816, Martinez 2818. Automatically, those three will qualify for the semi final. Have to wait and see. 2938, fast enough for Zabo. I think it may be, but Zulcek and Martinez, how lucky are we to have the silver medalists from the 800 and the 1500 from the recent European Junior Championships um, in one race? And they both looked very comfortable nav navigating those rounds, as, as did Sadek. She said she's done some relays, but if she didn't have that experience of the European Junior Championships earlier in the year, you can't tell because she navigated that round very well as well. But Zulcik happy to take up the running, leading gun to tape. It's that third 200 again for me, just slowed up. I think a lot of these races have come through the bell, through that 400 in a good pace. But it was only Sheila Jokoska in the first round that kept it moving um, in that first heat. She kept it moving through that third 200. All the other races have slowed and then kicked again, and that has really broken the field, field apart. You can see Martinez, Sadek, and Zulshik, the only athletes that could deal with that acceleration of pace in the last 200. And they're rewarded with those automatic qualifying spots from this fourth and final heat and we'll wait to see the non-automatic qualifying people there it goes all check then on your screens comfortable victory for her 2761 for ukraine in one Sp the spanish athlete marina martinez 2821 for second Slovenian athlete Veronica Sadek 2834 automatically qualifies. Two BBs in that one. Toga 22807. And Yaha 23155 PB as well. It's great running. Habolshi 21165 might be in with a shot. Zabo 2939. Hungarian athlete will be tentatively waiting on the sidelines. Is she making it through to those semi finals? We are coming to the conclusion of this women's javelin throw in the heptathlon. Enoch on the runway at the moment. She's in silver medal position. She's had a decent, decent javelin throw so far. Not up at her personal best of 46.10, but she's still got time. This is the third and final round for Pippi Enoch. Pippi Enoch, the birthday girl. That's what we should call her for the rest of the day. Over 40 meters, that's a great throw. Great throw from the Estonian athlete, looking for Estonia's first ever medal in the World Junior Heptathlon. That would make it a doubly good birthday present, present for her and getting herself in the history books for her country. Pippi Enoch there. 41-12. Forty-one eleven from this round, so just a centimetre short of her best throw. So forty-four twelve will be her best throw. And here we see Suj taking her final throw. Personal best already, forty-three oh five for Sabina Suj. She looked delighted with that. Can she add a little bit more in this final round? Suj negotiating that well. Well over the 40 meter mark for Sabina Suj. She has really found her rhythm in this in this javelin throw. So 
Sabina Suj there, final round throw. 41-41, but a great series she's put together there. Started off with that personal best of 43.05 in the first round, but there is the conclusion of the heptathlon javelin throw competition. Saga Vinanin nailing that PB of 49.22. But PB, a lot of PBs in that field. We saw some long throws in the qualification for the javelin men yesterday. It looks like this runway is suiting these athletes really well for some long javelin throws. That'll be exciting as we move towards um, the final for the women. That'll be the first event in the afternoon session. Well, standings now, after six events of the seven events, only one event, the dreaded, I'm gonna say that, the athletes dislike that sometimes, 800 meters, two laps. We've just seen all the heats of that, but Saga Vanenin is still very much in control. We're gonna get this graphic again. We were showing you this earlier, so you can see now exactly how many points they got for each event. 953 for the high jump for Vanenin, 747 for the shot put, 902 for the 200 meters, 843 for the long jump, and Javelin, 8.45, a PB there, equals 5,326 for number one, Saga Vanenin. Can she get over 6,000? She's done it before. We saw her do that a couple of weeks ago in Estonia. We will get our calculators out in our lunch break and try and figure that, try and figure out whether she can get over 1,000 points. Well, 6,000 points. A disqualification. We are just waiting for confirmation to see whether we're going to get a replay to bring you up to date. But Saga Vinanen closing in on that 6,000 points this afternoon. Well, this is the qualification summary in the women's 800 meters. Daganachu then of Ethiopia, 2-2-94, the fastest by a long way of those qualifiers. She went in heat number one. Delgani then, 2-5-3-8. Urban, 2-7. Zuchep, 2-7-6-1. Some great running. Avery Pearson, front running from Canadian athlete there, 2-8. Sabo, 2-9-3-9. Who else qualified then? Sudakova, 2-10, got you through. Pansini, 2-10-3-4. Dishanaka then, 2-10-7-0, all qualified for those semi-finals. And this is the men's qualifiers for their semi-final. That will take place on Saturday evening. Wanyoyi, 1.46.51. Noah Kibet, the two Kenyans leading the way. Yanis Mazane of France. The two Algerians, Kapsir Lewalski. Keep your eye out for the fast finishing pole as well. This is the remainder of those athletes through to that semi-final. Choba of South Africa, the final fastest, fast non-automatic qualifier. Well, a timetable for this afternoon session. We have eight finals to bring you. Hannah and I are very excited about that. The first will be at 2.40, the women's javelin throw final. Then it finishes off with the men's 100 meters final at 10 to six. We have both of those finals, the women's 100 meters final and the men's 100 meters final. Can we see records being broken later on this afternoon?